Hello dear participants, I welcome you all in this certificate course on data interpretation using MS Excel and SPSS. So we are entering into week number 4 but before starting this week let me highlight some of the key concepts which we tried to cover during uh, previous lectures or in the previous weeks. At the beginning of this course we started with the introduction to data where we try to understand the meaning of data and different types of the data. Then we try to understand the meaning of variable and different types of the variable. Then we have seen that there are different four measurement of scales namely nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. Moreover we have seen that in a software like SPSS we will be considering only three types of the measurement scale. They are nominal, ordinal and scale itself. This scale is nothing but it includes interval and ratio scales. This nominal and ordinal they are actually associated with categorical data or qualitative data. And this scale is actually associated with numeric data or quantitative data. Then we shifted to introduction to MS Excel where we tried to understand that how can we enter our data in MS Excel, how can we give codes, how can we work with the data cleaning part. Moreover, we also tried to perform some of the basic functions or basic formulas using MS Excel. Then we shifted to SPSS where we tried to understand the basic structure of the SPSS. We tried to understand that how can we enter our data in SPSS, how can we import data in SPSS, what is data view, what is variable view, all that introductory part we try to cover in those respective lectures. In the recent week, week number 3, we have seen that how to construct different tables and different charts for different types of the variables in MS Excel and SPSS. So as of now, we are familiar with the process, process of what? process to construct the tables and charts in MS Excel and SPSS. In continuation to week 3, now we are going for reading and the interpretation part. Reading and interpretation of the table and charts first. Fine. And that is why the title of this lecture is Reading and Interpretation of Table Output in SPSS. Why we are focusing on the SPSS output? Why not MS Excel? Reason is the output or the result from MS Excel and the result from SPSS, they are same, they are homogeneous. There will be no difference in the result. So we'll be more focusing on the reading and the interpretation of the table output. And the same we can apply for the MS Excel output too. So the objective of this lecture is to make you familiar with reading and interpretation of table output in SPSS. Now let me start with the classification of statistical techniques. I hope we all are familiar with this slide because this slide we have taken from the week 1. Statistical techniques are classified into four parts. Descriptive, inferential, associative and predictive. So far week 4 is concerned, we will be starting with descriptive statistics first. As our descriptive statistics been completed, then we'll shift to inferential, then we'll shift to associative, and then we'll shift to the predictive statistical techniques. So here in this lecture, we are starting with the descriptive statistics. Now, in descriptive statistics again, there are three different methods. If we are having data with us, then first we go for the tabulation, tabular methods that we apply on our data. Then we go for the graphs, there we apply graphical methods on our data and finally we go for the numerical methods. In the previous week, we have seen that how can we construct these tables and these graphs. In this lecture, we will be dealing with that how can we read and how can we interpret these tables. In the next lecture, We'll go for the reading and interpretation for graphs and in the next lecture we'll be going for the numerical methods. 
so let me start with the reading and interpretation of table output in spss and for that i'll have to open my spss data editor now here what would be the first step first step is that i should uh, import my data how to import simply i'll go here to the file i'll click on the file then i'll go to open then i'll click on data then a new pop up window comes here i'll have to choose a appropriate file of type and for that i'll have to go here and i'll have to click on this arrow going there i'll click on the excel because all my data is there in the excel file fine then all my excel files now they appear here then i'll choose the appropriate file which actually i want to import here in spss and then i'll click on open then a new pop up window comes here also i'll click on okay now here is my data my data is been imported then what would be the next step next step is that always i should first go to the variable view if i have imported the data then i'll click here on the variable view as i click on the variable view here i come here i'll have to define my variables if you look here carefully the labels are not there i'll have to give codes i'll have to give codes here for gender c then sati c then for age c also i'll have to give codes i'll have to check these measures whether all these measures are correct or wrong i'll have to check all the these types i'll have to verify my data i'll have to verify my variables so once i rearrange it once i give codes once i verify the major once i verify the types then i can say that i have defined my variable properly and then i can go for the data view now here in the variable view how many nominal variables are there there are two nominal variables and what are they the first nominal variable is gender the other nominal variable is also gender but that is gender c what makes them different here if i go to type though the measures are same here the types are different the first variable is a string variable and the other is a numeric what is string string means the responses which i have recorded here in the spss in that column they are alphabetical they are in the words and that is why they are string type what does that mean it means the gender is a variable which is a nominal but the type of variable is string gender c is also a nominal variable but the type of variable is numeric because here we have recorded the responses in numbers giving codes 0 1 1 0 0 that way story is same with these ordinal things here fine so we are having three ordinal variables these first two ordinal variables are associated with satisfaction level the first one is string and the other is a numeric so it is not always necessary that if you are having nominal or ordinal variable they all are string or they all are numeric you will have to be very clear with this part though we are having the nominal variable variables one variable may be of the string type and the other variable may be having the numeric kind of uh, responses fine and uh, this is very important thing why it is important let me explain you in some upcoming slides fine once i have defined my variables then i'll go to data view i'll click on data view now my data is ready for the statistical treatment fine now we are going for the tabulation and then we'll read our result and we'll try to interpret our result so we'll start with the frequency tables first and for that let me take you again to the spss now here i'll go to analyze then i'll go to descriptive statistics in the frequencies then uh, i'll select the variables which i actually uh, want to give treatment on so here if you look carefully i have selected both the nominal variables gender and gender of respondent then i have selected the ordinal satisfaction and level of satisfaction then i have selected scale and one more ordinal that i have selected now i'll just click on this and i'll add, add all these variables here in this right hand side box empty box 
so let me click on this so i have added all these variables on which i actually wish to give statistical treatment and i have clicked here display frequency table now as i press ok all my result all my frequency tables they appear here if i scroll this i'll get all my results fine in the output window but in this lecture i'll go one by one first i'll choose only the uh, frequency tables which are associated with nominal variables then we'll go for the ordinal variables and then we'll go for the scale variables so let me start with the nominal variables now here in the nominal variable before going to the results let me explain you here in the variable view how many nominal variables are there there are only two nominal variables they are gender and the other is gender c though they both are nominal variables but they are different in what context they are different the first variable gender is is actually a string type of data and gender c is having the numeric type of data what does that mean what does that mean what is string and what is numeric string means i am having the data in my data view in words it is alphabetical data and that is why here if you look at this icon this sign this symbol here is a a is here we can see the a a means alphabets are there all the responses that we have recorded are alphabetical and here in this gender c this is a numeric nominal data where i am having the responses in numbers so that is the difference between gender and gender c why i am explaining this because when we'll go to read the result and or when we are going to interpret the result there all this part will help us out fine so here is the output now the first table the first table is actually associated with this string data and the second table is associated with this numeric data i am working on the same data means here i am having the alphabetical responses the same responses i have just recorded here using the numbers so my frequency table should be same but it is not same here i am getting female first and then male here i am getting male first and then female these numbers are those respective numbers are same fine the female for female frequency is 46 here it remains same no problem no problem but the way i get the result the way both the table appears that pattern is different and why that is different let me explain you see here in the first table it has considered female first what is the reason reason is that this table been computed from this data set this column and spss has uh, sorted this data alphabetically in ascending order that is why f comes first so that female it has considered first and then male so for this table is concerned again spss has considered this column and it has uh, sorted it out considering these numbers and that is why this zero assigned value zero comes first and that label assigned to this zero is male that is why male comes first here and the female comes second so this is the way that we go with the nominal variables and uh, frequency tables are very useful uh, for the nominal uh, variable we can go with the interpretation and that interpretation is very relevant and uh, appropriate if we are constructing frequency tables on nominal variables fine now let me take you all to the ordinal variables in ordinal variables again i'm having two different ordinal variables here first is the satisfaction other is the sati c both are showing the same thing satisfaction level but the way i have entered the data the first i have entered using alphabets words and the other variable i have entered using numbers fine both are ordinal but one is using the words alphabets and the other is with using the numbers now if i construct frequency tables on this both the variables then what would be the output and how to read and how to interpret it let's see so i have just picked the output here and here is 
the frequency table. Now this first table is actually associated with this string data and the other output is actually associated with this numeric data. Both are ordinal. Now how to interpret? Here if you see, again here in this case, SPSS has sorted this thing considering the alphabets. N comes first, then S, then U, V, V. And if I go to the second table, frequency table, here it has considered very satisfied first, satisfied next and then neutral and then unsatisfied and then very unsatisfied. Why? Because in the second table, SPSS has considered the ranking like one number we have assigned to very satisfied, two we have assigned to satisfied, three to neutral, four to unsatisfied and five to very unsatisfied. Where we assign these numbers, we have assigned these numbers here in the variable view. That is why all means variable view, it should be clear to you. Then you should be well aware that the way you have entered the data in data view. And then when you are proceeding with the statistical treatment part, you should be well aware that whether means uh, what is the base for this table. That base you should be well aware of. Then and then only we can go for the proper interpretation thing. Fine. Now the simple thing here is that if we are having the coded data, then we are going to get proper tables and we can miss all such tables can lead you to the proper interpretation. But this table also may lead you to the proper interpretation. But here I'll have to identify that where is my very satisfied thing, where is neutral because I have arranged these options here in proper means kind of sequence but here it has shuffled it why they are shuffled because this data is alphabetical and that is why it is recommended that whenever you are giving the statistical treatment you should give on the numerical variables they should be coded no problem if they are coded no problem you can give statistical treatment you will get the results in a such a way that you can easily interpret them fine now let me go ahead. If we are constructing frequency tables on ordinal data, that's fine. That interpretation is appropriate. That interpretation is relevant. You can choose any one table. No problem. My recommendation is that you should go with the second table, the coded one. Fine. Now let me go to scale variables. If I construct frequency tables on scale variables, how to read and can we go with the interpretation part? Let me show. Here, in the so far the scale data is concerned here I'm having the one variable age there are many other variables but we are not going to consider those fine we are going to consider only one scale variable and that is scale the other variable here age c is actually the base for age c is the scale variable age but here we have given the cores ranking and accordingly it has we have made it ordinal uh, kind of variable now let me go ahead and let me construct frequency table on the age. So here is the table on this age and this the table we have constructed on this column this variable age fine. So here is a frequency table. Can I go and give some meaning to it? Definitely we can give some sort of meaning for example I can say that there is one respondent who is having age 14. There are four respondent who are having age 21 and this is the way that I can explain each and every uh, this uh, age value fine but this is very huge table here again here it will continue fine it will be a very huge table will it be a appropriate stand will it be a valid stand that I am explaining each and every value here from the frequency table answer to this question is no it will be not a very in means it will not be a very appropriate way that we should explain the frequency table for the scale data. It will not be a uh, means kind of a good stand as a researcher. Instead of doing this, if I go to ordinal data. Now this HC, HC is nothing but the same scale data I have converted into orders, the categorized way. Now if I Construct the frequency table on this HC, I am getting this table. Now, 
if i compare the previous table and this table which table is easy which table is better to interpret which table is better to go with this table is better to go with because here simply i can interpret that fine there are 15 respondent and they lie between the age group of 50 to 60 there are uh, 33 respondents who lies between 30 to 40 but instead if i construct the frequency table on the scale variable then it may lead me to the kind of confusing interpretation fine so it is always better that if you are having the scale data first you convert it to the categorical data and then you go for the frequency tables fine here the interpretation is appropriate but for the scale purely scale data interpretation uh, would be inappropriate fine so this was all about the frequency table now let me take you to the cross tables in the cross tables we are having two conditions the first condition is that either if you are having one variable which is nominal and ordinal and the other variable is also a nominal and ordinal then we can go for the cross table that's fine second condition is that either if you are having the nominal and ordinal one variable and the other is a scale but that scale is coded categorical scale data then we can go for the cross table fine now how to read it and how to interpret it let's see for that let me first take the nominal and ordinal variables two variables one is nominal and the other is ordinal but both are not coded now here in this variable view who are the nominal variables here gender and in this this gender is non coded because codes are not there and this is a string data so we are going to consider the string data first fine and the other is the satisfaction that is ordinal that is string we are going to consider these two let's consider these two first and what would be the result let's see so here i'll go to analyze descriptive cross tab here i'm going to consider this gender so i'll just insert here in the rows and then satisfaction here in the columns you can insert satisfaction here in the row and gender here in the column no problem you can insert any variable in the row and any other variable in the column no problem then i'll just click on ok and here i got the result now how to interpret this how to read this see this gender is again here this is alphabetical data that the responses we have recorded are in words and this is again from this column and this data is again alphabetical not coded fine now when i'm going for the interpretation part again this thing has shuffled neutral came first very satisfied came little later satisfied came here fine whereas when i have asked question to my respondent simply i have arranged the responses like very satisfied satisfied neutral unsatisfied and very unsatisfied so this is the way actually i have collected the information but the way i am getting the response this, this result it has shuffled so it may trouble me when i am going for the interpretation and that is why it is always recommended that it is always recommended that if you are going for the cross table or the frequency table you should choose coded nominal data or coded ordinal data now what i mean to say let's see if i go further and if i now instead of uh, selecting the non coded variables if i select the coded variables like here if i select the gender of respondent which is which one is a nominal variable coded one and if i am selecting this level of satisfaction sati c which is again a ordinal variable but coded variable and then if i click on ok here is my result and this result if i interpret now here now it has came in proper uh, that sequence now simply i can go with the interpretation part that there are four very satisfied uh, male respondents then there are five female who are unsatisfied because this has appeared in the way that which actually i wish to fine 
so so far the cross table is concerned if you are having one nominal and the other ordinal and both if they are coded then the interpretation which we will be doing that that will be appropriate one fine now if i go further and if you are considering one nominal variable and the other scale variable then what would be the result let's see simply i will go to the cross tab and here uh, one nominal variable been already inserted here in rows now i am going to add these two variables age which one is a scale variable and the other is a ordinal variable actually that is a categorized variable that is age of respondent fine so let me take both the variables here and then i'll click on okay here is the output now how to interpret this one nominal and other is a scale here is a scale variable now how to interpret this how to interpret this can we interpret this can we go with the explaining this part that there is a one female who, who is having the age 14 that's fine there are four female with the age of 21 so on so forth this is very lengthy means very huge table is there fine instead if i go here here is one nominal variable and here are the groups this is a categorized uh, this variable categorized variable of that scale variable age fine here now easily we can interpret this thing fine there are 20 male from the age 30 to 40 there are seven female from the age group 50 to 60 so it is always better if you are working on a scale data then if you are having one nominal one scale and one kind of categorized scale data then you should go with these two not with this so far the cross table is concerned so far the cross table is concerned so the frequency table and cross table they are actually suited they are suited for the nominal or ordinal type of variables now if i go further here the interpretation would be inappropriate if you are working on the nominal and scale and here the interpretation is appropriate if you are working on one nominal and other categorical or kind of ordinal fine now let me take you all to the stem and leaf display here again will first consider nominal then ordinal and then scale so let me start here here is a data view now if i go to analyze then i'll go to descriptive and here i'll click on explore now here is the list of variables now in stem and leaf i'm going to insert one nominal that is gender of respondent one ordinal and one scale all these three i'm going to insert here at once let's see what happens then so if i select all these three now all the three are here simply i'll click on the plot and then i'll click on stem and leaf here i will click on none and i'll press on continue here i'll click on okay here is my result now the first result is with the nominal if i construct stem and leaf display for nominal what would be the result this would be the result here here are the stem here are the leaves can I give some meaning to this? That's fine. 0 is actually assigned code. 0 is actually assigned code. Fine. 0 is assigned code to what? To male. So these zeros been considered as a leaf. But if you remember in a data, how we have recorded the data? Gender C. If you remember 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, that way. Single digit. Fine. Now, this one been considered here as a 10. So, again, this has gone wrong. We cannot interpret this empty part. So, stem and leaf display is not suited for nominal variable. That is why here the interpretation is inappropriate. Never try to interpret stem and leaf display for nominal uh, variable. Fine. Now, let me take you to the ordinal. The same story is here with the ordinal. Here is the satisfaction level and if you remember we coded the data 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 5 and this is a satisfy, satisfy, fine. Now here are the steam and here are the leaves. So how to interpret this empty part? No, we cannot, we cannot. 
so stem and leaf are not suited for ordinal data moreover if you remember there is alphabetical data satisfaction fine very satisfied satisfied stem and leaf will not work on this it will give you error message that uh, these are the string uh, variables so that spss will not able to give at least such numbers it will not give why why spss is giving few numbers here because your data this satis is actually numeric variable you have just inserted these values these numbers you have inserted some numbers these are the numbers fine that is why it is giving you some kind of reason see stem and leaf or any statistical uh, thing if you give statistical treatment spss will give you some kind of results it will give you something but it is up to us that whether we are able to give some meaning to it can we read this can we read this can we interpret this and here is the important thing that if we are not if we are not giving to give some proper meaning or if you are not able to interpret this thing then what is the use constructing this stem and leaf on the ordinal fine so for ordinal variable stem and leaf is not suited now if i go for the scale if i go for the scale data now here is the stem and leaf for the age and the age that we have inserted data like this this is purely a scale data and here is the stem and leaf here we can interpret like uh, this uh, there means there is one respondent with the uh, age of 14 there are uh, 21 respondents who lies between 55 uh, sorry 35 to 39 there are 13 respondents who lies between 45 to 49 so this is the way that we can at least explain something fine so stem and leaf actually they are suited for the scale variables and here the interpretation is appropriate whereas in the nominal and in ordinal they are inappropriate here again for the age of respondent that categorized the data of age again the stem and leaf will not work out properly here the interpretation is inappropriate now let me take you to the final slide of this lecture there are few simple rules rule number 1 frequency tables are actually appropriate and they are suited for the categorical variables so you should always construct frequency tables on categorical variables you should not try frequency tables on scale variables fine now cross tables are appropriate for the categorical variables nominal ordinal fine you should not try cross tables on the scale purely scale variables and stem and leaf display are actually appropriate for the numerical variables scale variables you should not try stem and leaf for categorical nominal or ordinal type of variables and uh, here we are so already we have seen that how to construct these tables and here in this lecture number 15 we have seen that how to read and how to interpret the tables so frequency tables and cross tables they are actually associated with nominal and ordinal stem and leaf they are actually appropriate for the scale type of the variables and uh, so far this lecture is concerned we'll stop here in the next lecture we'll go with the reading and interpretation of the charts till then thank you for your kind listening see you soon in the next lecture